Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. We have seen in the past few years that the communications profession has never been more important. And we want to help promote communicators and let them excel and create successful strategies to support their employees and themselves in 2022. The start of the new year is a great time to set some goals, whether that be organizational or career goals. And Leslie Allman, who I'm super excited to introduce a little bit later here, um, will help us motivate us to do exactly that. My name is Greg Stortz, and I'm the Director of Engagement here at Interact, and I'm so excited to be able to host this webinar today. And we are live. So let's dive into a few little housekeeping things um, before we get started. Now, we want this... Oh, great, this worked up. Um, we want this to be as an interactive event as possible. So on your screen, you should see a few tabs that are available to you, one of them being chat and one of them being Q&A. So be sure to use the Q&A tab uh, if you have any questions while Leslie is, is sharing some information with us. Now, if you don't have a question, you can still keep an eye on this space because we want you to upvote the questions that you think are interesting, and we'll do our best to get to all of them at the end of this session. Uh, as we are live today, we don't foresee that we'll run into any technical issues, but in the unlikely event that we do, or you find yourself having uh, some, some trouble with your audio or visuals, an often quick fix to get you back up and running and, and hearing and seeing us is refreshing your browser, and that should resolve it for you. Now, we do have a team behind the scenes uh, that are able to help you if you do run into any issues that you can't resolve yourself, so use the chat to, to reach out to them. Now, I'm not sure how you ended up with us today. Maybe you're an Interact community member already, or you're interested in our software, or you're just here to learn something new and exciting. Um, but either way, super excited to have you here with us. And before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about what we do here at Interact. Interact powers the world's best digital workplaces. Our award-winning internet software transform how enterprises communicate and connect with their people, driving greater engagement and productivity within their organization. We are a passionate team of strategists, project managers, technical experts, designers, and trainers, and we thrive on removing the complexity of your internet projects. Over the past 15 years, we've launched 1,500 plus feature-rich intranets that and over that time we've amassed more than 60 customer awards which is super exciting to us as you can see our customers include organizations like sony playstation domino's levi's and new york life and at the end of this webinar if you are interested to learn more about interact and what we can do for your organization we will have an opportunity for you guys to let us know um, absolutely now, again, I'm so excited that today we get to introduce an amazing guest speaker, Leslie Allman, the author of an Amazon best-selling book, Better Internal Communication. Leslie brings us over 20 years of internal communication and employee engagement experience, and she started Allman Communication in 2010 to help organizations to better communicate and engage with their internal audiences. As a consultant, she has worked with over 50 major organizations, successfully helping them deliver major transformation and culture change programs. Leslie is a fellow of Institute of Internal Communication in the UK and has won numerous internal communication industry awards. She has organized internal communication events, judged internal communication award programs, and mentored fellow internal communication, uh, sorry, internal communicators like us. Leslie, this is an absolute impressive resume, and it's such a pleasure and an honor to be able to introduce you and, uh, and have you here speaking with us. Um, with that, I would love to hand the floor over to you and, uh, and let you take it from here. Thanks for, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Um, nice to meet you all from around the world. I hope you're having a great day so far. Um, I'm here to talk to you about how to add value and fast track your career. Um, hopefully, as Greg says, this being the beginning of the year, you're um, setting out your ambitions for 2022, and hopefully the next 20 minutes or so will help you to do that. So, um, oh, the, web, the um, thing's frozen at my end, but no, it's, it's arrived now. That's great. A little uh, technical hitch there. Um, Interact kindly sent out um, four key areas that they um, promised I would cover. So I thought that that's what I would do. Um, so in the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be talking about how to step up your knowledge, thinking and delivery, 
how to focus on what adds value and actually really importantly to stop doing what doesn't. Um, how to impress and influence your leaders to become a trusted advisor and um, consider the place of technology in your workplace. So there's, there's, there's four basic topics and for each of those I'm going to give two hints and tips. So at the end of this you should have at least eight, if my maths is correct, uh, eight um, things to take away that you can hopefully apply um, from tomorrow and really step up your game in um, internal communication. So the first one uh, we're going to look at is step up your knowledge, thinking and delivery. So obviously, as an internal communicator, you want to be doing the best job you possibly can be doing. And sometimes you get a bit stuck in the weeds. Um, so there's two things here that I'm going to take you through that hopefully will help you to um, cut through that and really deliver quality uh, internal communication for yourself and your organisation. Um, the first one is actually quite long. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that because you think, my God, if she's going to do eight of these, we'll be here all night. But um, the first one's quite long because it is, um, it is the basis of my book, basically, Better Internal Communication. So the model I'm going to take you through is the A, B, C, D, E of internal communication. And what this will do is help you to be more strategic. So quite often people come to us as internal communicators and they'll say, um, I need you to do me a video or I need you to create a newsletter or whatever that they, they think the answer to their problem is. But actually, you're the expert, not them. So um, it's important to actually get to the bottom of what it is they're really trying to achieve and then recommend to them the best way to achieve that, so the best solution possible for their situation. And they don't know that the answer is a video or a newsletter or whatever you're the expert you're the person to tell them how they should be doing it and if you use this model you can use it on something as simple as a, a one little announcement or you can use it for a whole strategy so it's really straightforward i'm going to really whiz you through it as i say it is it is you know two-thirds of the whole book so it would take a very long time to take you through it in detail but just having these headlines i think will be really helpful for you so let's have a look Oh, did that move? No. There we go. Um, so A. A is for audience. And this is where we start. Oh, skip now. Sorry, I'll go backwards. Oh, my buttons are really sticky today. I'm frightened to go back too far now. There we go. So A. A for audience. Um, this is where we start. Start at the very beginning. Um, quite often, as I say, internal communication and people within organisations and clients really start with the channel and they say this is what we need, we need a newsletter etc but where you should really start is the audience and the audience is who you want to communicate with and you need to be really really clear about that and one size won't necessarily fit all so there's a, the, you need to ask yourself who's this communication really aimed at have a conversation with your client or your internal customer and really get to the bottom of drill down to find out who is it they're trying to communicate with, who are they trying to reach, what, what are the potential blockers or enablers, and they're all your audience, basically. And there's lots of hints and tips on doing that. I know you'll be familiar with um, stakeholder mapping, for example. Um, you can do inbox analysis just to, to sort of get to know what these people have to wrestle with on a day-to-day -day basis, day in the life, um, personas. There's lots of uh, really great ways, techniques you can use to get to know your audience. And this is where it really starts. And if you, whether you're in-house or a consultant, knowing who you're communicating with is the absolute foundation of everything else you're going to do. So A is for audience. Let's see if I can make this work this time. Yes, I think there's a bit of a time lag on this, so I shall remember that now and stop pressing buttons. Um, so once you know who you're communicating with, the next thing is why you're communicating with them. And that is generally in most organisations, that'll be for some sort of behaviour change. You're not communicating with them just because for the good of your health or because um, it's nice. You actually want people to do something differently, generally. Certainly organisations do, because that's why you're there. Um, 
you're there to help organization the organization to deliver its objectives and its strategy through its people so you want people to change their behavior so think about why you're communicating with them what's the purpose what's the objective and whether that's a small communication or a major program then the questions are the same what do we want people to do say think or feel differently and actually if they're not doing saying thinking or feeling differently after you communication then don't bother to send it out because there's no point um in just talking just communicating for the sake of it so how can you motivate them to make the required change knowing a little bit about sort of motivation theory helps and people like daniel pink's drive um talking about what motivates people are really useful interesting um perspectives to have in your back pocket um but the main thing really is um thinking about do you want them to be informed connected or engaged and depending on the answer to that you'll choose different um, methods going forward so that's behaviors the second part of the model part three is surprise surprise content um, this is where we get to what we're actually communicating so we've done who we're communicating communicating to we've done why we're communicating with them now it's what are we communicating and that's the content so what are the key messages? What do you want to convey? Will your content actually connect with them? Is it clear and compelling? Is it in context? Is it concise? So, you know, really check that. And if somebody gives you some content and says, communicate this, then go through those six C's with them so that you can make sure that what you're sending out is, is the right content and it's going to land with the audience. And then our role these days as communicators isn't just as it used to be in the past to create the communication. We, we also quite often co-create things and quite often we're just curating content these days. So think about your role and how that's going to fit in with, um, with what's required. So that's your C for content. Um, the other thing about content, it's not just the written word. Um, obviously it's um, imagery as well. So if, if you're using imagery, then make sure it's building and reinforcing what you're trying to do and not distracting from it. So I know a picture paints a thousand words, but it could be the wrong words if you're not careful. So uh, be very careful what you think about when you're thinking about imagery and graphics, moving images and that sort of thing. Don't be distracting. So that's content, what you're communicating. Then, and only then, do you come to the bit that most communicators get overexcited about and certainly most clients and um, line managers and leaders get most excited about, which is delivery. So this is the channels of communication. And I think a guy called Bill Quirk, who's a real sort of guru of internal communications, he, he, he reckons that um, internal communicators are seduced by channels and that um, it's sort of the new shiny thing in the toolbox is the thing we all want. And I guess my this whole model, the, the sort of word of warning, if you like, is only start to think about the channels once you've covered the ABC. So if you knew, you know, who and why and what, then you can think about how. And when you come to think about how, then is it is it we, we as communicators, we've got a massive toolkit these days, more than we've ever had before. There's just so many ways to reach people and listen to people. It can be verbal, it can be online, it can be print. Even on a rare occasion these days, it can be face-to-face. -face. So have a think about all the tools available in your toolbox and then go back to your audience and what you're trying to achieve and figure out which one's going to work best. Because obviously with high concern type of content, you'll want to do more face-to-face, two-way interactive type, type comms. If it's just informing people, you can do it online, etc. So um, have a think about it and where your audience are as well, because obviously if they're sitting at a desk, they can easily access online communication. If they're on a building site or a railway line or something like that, then and they're working night shift, then it's very difficult for them to, to engage with anything other than face to face communication or mobile phones, if they're allowed those. So, yeah, think about the practicalities as well as the. Um, accessibility for your audiences and a really important communication channel in the delivery section is the capability of your line managers and leaders 
And part of your role, a really important part of your role is to help build that capability and that confidence so that line managers um, are able to deliver. So quite often in communications, it says, ask your line manager if you have any questions or you know, um, go to your line manager for this, that and the other. And poor old line managers aren't really equipped to do this. They get very little training to be communicators. They're just expected to be experts at this. So um, make sure they can they can do it, what you're, what you're saying they can do. And make sure your communications are two way. So that's D. We're nearly there on point one, and I promise you all the other points are much, much shorter. Um, so evaluation. This is the E of the ABCDE model. What does success look like? How do you know if your communications have achieved their objectives? And the great thing about the ABCDE model is that you just go back to B and the behaviours you're trying to achieve and check whether you've done it or not. So if you're trying to reduce health and safety um, incidents at work, then if you measure health and safety incidents and they've gone down, then you've obviously succeeded. So yeah, link back to what, what your objectives were and measure those. So don't measure necessarily, it's useful to know and interesting to know, measure data, how many hits, et cetera. But if you're actually looking for a change in behavior, then measure the behavior change. So that is the ABCDE model. And there's a lot more about that in the, in the book, obviously. So the um, second part of this one is have a plan. So this is a really speedy one, basically, which is use that ABCDE model to create a plan. Because if you've got a plan, you're much more likely to succeed. So there's a the story there about the New Year's resolutions. 88% of people don't keep them, but an extra 22% do if they actually set some goals. So think like an athlete, think like um, a sports person and have outcome goals, performance goals and process goals. So the outcome goal might be win the race, but your performance goal would be get fit. And your process goal would be do weightlifting twice a week, do a run three times a week. And if you think about your comms planning like that, so if you want people to be engaged in something in particular, then what are the performance goals? What are the process goals that are going to help you get there? Break it down to bite-sized chunks so that you know that every day or every week or every month, you can tick things off that are getting you to where you want to get to. So have a plan. So they're the first, uh, that's the first item. Item two, she says with the time lag, here it comes. Um, focus on what adds value and stop doing what doesn't. Now I've got a sign behind me that says, say yes more than no. And, that, and that's my motto in life really, but actually, on a day-to-day -day basis in internal communication, you do have to um, say no sometimes. So let's have a look at how. So the first thing to do really is um, know how you're spending your time. And this is a, this is a template for a, a day in the life of a dialo um, exercise. And I've done this with, with loads of different comms teams. And basically you do a bit of a brainstorm with your comms team, you see, what you're spending your time doing and you put that along the top activity one activity two etc and then you give people this template to fill in um, on a daily basis if you want to die low or on a weekly basis if you want to why low um, and you'll be amazed at what you spend your time doing if you accurately um, log what you're doing a, a, a technology company i was working with the comms team wondered why they never got to do anything creative and innovative and it turned out it was literally they spent all their time in meetings, in training, in um, getting things um, approved and that sort of thing. So, you know, really sort of down in the weeds. They were spending a lot of time down in the weeds and they wanted to be up here doing strategic innovative things. So once you know what you're doing with your time, you can start to think, well, how do we, is that the right stuff? And if it isn't, how do we stop doing things that no one would notice? Who could we delegate some of this to? How come we've ended up with this? Um, how else could you free up your time so you can focus on more strategic value adding deliverables? So having the data of what you spend your time on is really, really useful. Um, second part of this is um, the, the just say no part. So once you know what you're doing, there's a tip here from, from a guy called Steve Crescendo, who some of you might know. 
um, and I use it a lot. He talks, he uses it for content, but you can use it for activities as well. It's this three bucket system. So first of all, for stuff you think you should actually be doing, shouldn't actually be doing, then pass. So just say no. I'll tell you a bit about that in a second. For the stuff you just actually have to do because it's part of your job, then just do it, publish it, as he says, just do it in the most sleek and effective way possible. But then the stuff you should be spending most of your energy on, the strategic, the value adding stuff, then promote that, push it up your priority list and make sure that, that the next time you do a dialo, the, um, the amount of time you spend on that part of your agenda is much, much, much bigger. So that's prioritise your activities. And then, although I'm a yes person generally, learn to say no. I think communicators generally are nice, helpful people who want to be liked. So when people come and say, oh, could you just do this poster for my charity barbecue or whatever? You think, oh, go on then, um, because you want to be helpful. But actually saying no nicely and effectively is an important skill. So part of being able to do that is to have a really clear signed off strategy that's aligned to the objectives of the organization and then because you've got that you're able to say well is this in my strategy and if it's not you can say no you know legitimately say no it sort of formalizes your role and empowers you to say no because the charity barbecue isn't actually on your comms plan so therefore if they want to do that they might have to find another way of doing it so that's two examples of how you can um add more value by saying no and spending your time more effectively. The next thing we're going to look at, so if you've got a plan, you've got a strategy and you're spending your time effectively, then how do you impress and influence your leaders so you can become a trusted advisor? I hear a lot and Greg says it at the beginning, you know, comms has absolutely gone up the um, hierarchy in the last two years and we have got a seat at the table. But in order to sort of keep that seat at the table, we have to be seen to be adding value and not just be firefighting and, and doing tactical stuff. So how do we impress our leaders and become a trusted advisor in the long term? So first thing really is to know what's important to your leaders. So the amazing thing and some um, some people are quite surprised when I say this. I say business leaders aren't all that interested in internal communication. It is like many things to them. It's a means to an end. So what they are interested in is what it can deliver for them. So get an understanding of what they need and what they want. So what's keeping them awake at night? What's their strategy? What's their priorities? What do they need employees to do differently in order to deliver their strategy? Because that's your job is to help them to get people to do something differently to deliver the strategy. And then you can focus all your time and effort and budget on delivering that behavioural change. So back to the B on the ABCD model, what's the behavioural change you're looking for? And in order to get behavioural change, you can't just tell people stuff. So in that graph, which is um, out of the book, if you just tell people stuff, all you get is awareness. If you spend a bit more time explaining it, then you get some understanding. If you have some two way interaction, then you get buy in and only then do you get behavior change. And only when you get behavior change will things actually happen. So um, focus on adding, finding out what the leaders want and then helping them to deliver it by changing the behavior of employees. So that's um, the first part of this one. And the second part is to be taken seriously, you need, oh, is this a build? Let's have a go. So you need business acumen. Um, this is Zora Artis, who's an Australian communicator. This is her, her tips for being taken seriously. So business acumen, um, you need to understand the language of the boardroom. You need to know about numbers. And I know we communicators don't naturally have a stomping ground of numbers. We tend to be in the world of words, but just knowing some key stuff, you don't have to be, you know, um, the finance director, but knowing what they're um, knowing what they're talking about really, really helps and talking their language and what matters to them. So have some business acumen. You're, you're an internal communicator. 
but you need to do it in the world, the context of the business you're in. Secondly, demonstrate that what you're doing actually adds value, that it is actually delivering what they want delivering. So measure the outcomes and evidence your effectiveness with data. And obviously the uh, things like Interact are great for that because they, you've got evidence, you've got data to back up um, what's going on in your world of comms. So take accountability. Have courage. This I found this lots over the years. I go into a place and they go, oh my God, the boss, he's so scary. You can't possibly ever say anything to him. And you know, just oh yeah, or her, actually, more often than her. Um, and everyone's tiptoeing around them. And actually, what they want is someone to be frank with them and tell them the truth and be a critical friend. So they're not looking for more yes people and you're not adding value if you just agree with everything you say. So going back to the very beginning, we're the experts in internal comms, not them. So they turn to us as they would to an accountant or a marketeer to get our opinion and our advice. So if they say, I need a video, you can say, I don't think you do. I think if we go through this strategic exercise, we'll find that what you really need is X, Y, Z. And then, surprise, surprise, you go up in their estimations, not down. So do be willing, have the courage to push back and make alternative suggestions, because then you'll start to be taken seriously. And finally, on this one, curiosity. So stay at the top of your game. You need to keep up with the latest trends and innovations. I've been in this game for 20 years or more, and, you know, things change all the time. So... What you used to do in the past won't necessarily uh, work going forward. But then also don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, but seek out inspirations, learn from connected worlds, places like marketing, the things that brand marketeers are doing, actually, um, and sales. They, they'll they work with, with employee audiences as well as external audiences. So um, keep an eye out for best practice in lots of different places. So final section in uh, my uh, torrent of advice is uh, consider the place of technology in your workplace comms. So I said earlier that we've got um, you know, a massive toolbox to play with. It's great fun. We can sort of think of all these things we could possibly do to deliver comms to our audiences. And when we've done the ABC and get to the delivery part, then quite often the answer will be some sort of technological solution because it's a great way to reach people and hear from people and have data, et cetera. So the good thing, the benefits of technology, I'll not go through every line of these um, in the interest of time, but there's lots of great benefits to communicators because it gives you control and it gives you data and it gives you the ability to um, reach people who wouldn't ordinarily be reached. So that's the benefit to communicators. And there's a massive benefit to users as well. So. Um, they can access get access stuff in their own time. They can share their own stories. They get a voice, and um, it can adapt to to what they need. So, lots of benefits to technology. But one one really big um, watch out, which I'll come on to next. So, four point two. Always start with your users. So, if again there's a new shiny bit of tech and you think I need this. Um, or your IT department are saying you need this, then um, quite often they'll start with the technology and then configure it based on assumptions, implement the solution, and then you have to sell it in. So your job as a communicator, you come in at point four and they say, we've got this new thing, can you help us communicate it? And your job is to sell it in. And quite often then you're gonna get resistance, you're gonna get a time lag, quite often get workarounds where people just continue doing what they've always done because they haven't been part of the process of, of getting to where you've got to. So my advice is to start with the user, define what they actually want in terms of content and requirements, then choose the best technology for the job and then involve users in configuring and implementing it. And that way, once it goes live, you've already got the buy-in, you're pushing against an open door. So that's um, the final of the eight pieces of advice I've been giving you. And I guess the last thing to note is don't forget, and I think this has been a message throughout, an internal communicator's role is to deliver value, not just deliver content. 
So you really need to be more strategic if you're going to fast track your career, if you're going to be a trusted advisor, if you're going to um, add value to your organisation, then consider all those things I've talked about in terms of strategy and adding value. So that, I think I managed to get through it just about in time, um, in the 20 minutes or so allocated. And just before I uh, hand over to Craig for questions, there's one final point, which is that the book, the book, Better Internal Communication, um, there's a chance to win it. So um, those of you who are ahead of me will be already reading this, but the question is, and you just have to put the answer in the chat, and there is a bit of a time lag as we've discovered. So um, in the ABCDE model, if A stands for audience, B stands for behavior, and E stands for evaluation, what does C and D stand for? And the first correct answer already piling in is, Oh, I don't know which order they're coming. Uh, Esther Samson, I believe. Uh, well done, Esther. If you can let uh, Interact have your contact details, I shall um, get a copy of the book posted out to you. So with that, and well done everybody else who got it right. So um, if I got some yeah. message across to you, then content and delivery was definitely it, looking at these uh looking at these answers. So thanks everybody for entering. Thanks for listening and um, over to Greg. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leslie. I feel a, a few times during this presentation, you literally reached into my soul and we're, you're speaking my language um, or at least validating a lot of what I think we all go through. So um, some great tips uh, and tricks shared in that. Um, I think we've all can agree we're probably going to go and reevaluate what we do on a daily, weekly basis just to see what uh, what it is we could be doing to prioritize um, our time. I think people, so, I honestly think people are mainly trying, striving to do all this and they know it in their hearts, but yeah. day to day life gets in the way a bit. It sure does. It sure does. Now, a lot of great comments, um, people loving exactly what you shared, um, a lot of people asking for the slides, and, and of course, we're, we're happy to hand all of this out. So uh, to answer any of those questions, if you're thinking it, yes, these slides and the recording will be made available to you after the fact. Um, to kick off with some questions, I'm, I am going to dive into what the community has been asking, but um, I do want to start off with um, one here where, what advice do you have for anyone wanting to step up? to more uh, strategic level in internal communications, to more um, to up their game a little bit in their in their career? Well, I think um, obviously number one piece of advice is buy the book and implement what it says. <laughs> sure. But um, my real advice is your career is basically in your hands. There's like nobody else cares as much, as much about it as you do. So really it's up to you to make it happen. So um, decide what you want and then make a plan and then deliver on it. But you don't have to do that in a sort of cynical way because, you know, um, you know, certainly don't be blinkered in your approach to, you know, to do well no matter what, but um, think about what you want, think about how you get there and then do it. And, you know, use networking, use relationship building, use influencing. Um, but use them as two-way interactions. So mm. you're, um, I always find that in these sort of things, the, the more you give, the more you get back. So, you know, take every opportunity to share knowledge and to um, help other people, and then you'll, you'll get that back as well. And, and that's a really great way to step yourself up to a more strategic level, as well as using the ABCDE model, of course. Love it. And when it comes to qualification, you, you mentioned network and, and, and connecting with others. Um, what uh, is there anything we can share to the audience of, of what you recommend as, in terms of, you know, where they're at and how they can better themselves to be where they need to be um, when it comes to connecting to other people as mentors or, or, you know, gaining some qualifications out there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think... Um... Obviously, qualifications are great. Nothing, nothing beats actual experience. So experience is the number one thing. You know, try things out, do things. But qualifications are, can be really important. And I know that they're, they're, they're evidence of your expertise and they give you the sort of language and the, the confidence, if you like, to have conversations with senior teams. 
sort of quality it qualifies you to have those conversations literally so um there's obviously lots of courses and qualifications offered by industry bodies like IUIC and CIPR and um, BACB and you know everybody's probably on here is a, a member of some organization or other and it definitely is worth investing um, your time and some of your money unless you can get your company to pay um, in getting a qualification but it doesn't actually even have to be a specialist comms qualification and um, you could do an MBA and do a um, do a dissertation on comms which is what I did and again that gives you this surprising amount of cachet when you're talking to people in boardrooms that they think oh she's got an MBA or she's got a qualification therefore I'm going to listen to her and it shouldn't be necessarily like that but it is so therefore I'd recommend doing it but it doesn't have to just be a qualification I mean there's loads of fabulous webinars like this ways to listen to best practice and learn and you know think of every day as a school day and try and keep learning things because it's always changing and there's loads of stuff out there and a lot of it's free. So listen and learn, I'd say. Of course, of course. Now, we talk a lot, I mean, in a few webinars we've run ourselves, um, the word, the great resignation shows up quite a bit. And I know that most on this um, webinar right now are in some position to help combat that. But to remove ourselves from doing this for others and thinking about our own personal development and where we're at in our own careers, um, out of curiosity, do you have advice or a, a way to tell if it's time for you to move on um, when you're in an internal communications role um, for anybody who, who may be thinking of it or, or curious about it? Yes, and I think that's one thing looking back over uh, my career, there's certain points where I wish I'd gone sooner. Um, so I think that there is a point at which it's a good time to go. And, and a good time to go would be if your boss or your organization aren't giving you the sort of psychological safety you need. So if you're in a place where you don't feel you can actually speak up, where you don't feel safe to voice your opinion, et cetera. So that would be obviously get out the door straight away if you work in one of those places. Um, secondly, what about the leadership team? When it comes to internal communication, do they get it? As I said earlier, they don't have to, you know, love it, but they, if they get what it does for them, then that's a good team and you're lucky and you should stay there. In my experience, there's sort of um, two or three, two or three types of bosses. There's the, the bosses who get it. Right. Um, there's the bosses who would get it if you can prove to them that it's going to deliver something for them. And then the third lot are the bosses who are never going to get it. And if your boss is never going to get it, then you might as well move on. When I say boss, I don't mean just immediate line manager. I mean the leadership of your organisation. So move on if you're if if you're in a place where they don't get it. Um, move on if you've learned everything there is to learn, or if um, you know you're not learning new things regularly. And finally, I guess move on if if you see an opportunity that you think is good for you at that moment in time. So I think the, the last words in my book actually are um, be bold, because if, if you're bold, you might fail, but if you're not bold, you almost definitely will fail. Right, right. I love that advice. I love that a lot, actually. That's great. All right, I, I will stop sealing the light of the questions that I had that were burning, and I will dive into what our, our um, webinar attendees and participants were asking. So with 17 votes, I'll start at the very top. So very some huge interest in this. So in rail, our greatest challenge is reaching at our non-wired colleagues in the front line. COVID restrictions have prevented face-to-face -face briefings with managers. Would welcome suggestions to how to get key messages to the front line. So how do we break down those any barriers um, that may exist? Actually, I, during lockdown, I actually did an um, internal communication audit with the, with the UK rail business, um, which involved me phoning and talking to frontline workers um and it was really really interesting because you know the, the 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 ask was something along the lines of you know what do they think of the vision and values of the organization right. and when you listen to those people and it's back to this the key point of audience when you listen to what they say and understand what their day jobs or night jobs are like um the stuff that we're sending out from the center has absolutely no chance of getting to them 
landing and sticking. So you know, just listen to the audience, find out what will work for them. And the thing in, the, in, the, in this particular instance, the thing that would have worked for them was actually something like a, um, something like push technology that could go to their phones, which they didn't have. They couldn't take phones on shift with them, but they could use them in between shifts. Um, so from a technology point of view, there was a solution. But the really, really big thing was the line managers. So the line managers, we did an um, inbox exercise which basically we asked a, a sample of line managers to tell us everything that they got in their inbox in a, in a week, we set a particular week. Um, that was to do with communication and send it to us. And then we analysed what they got. And these people were getting, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of requests with, you know, with 20 odd attachments saying, you know, just can you just brief this to your teams and this sort of thing. And it was you know, setting themselves up, setting them up for failure because there's no way in, in a, you know, in shifts, shift handovers where you get maybe 10 minutes to brief people and there was, here's these 700 slides that you need to share with your team on the side of a railway in the middle of the night. Um, so it's really about understanding your audience and creating the content that will get to them and building the capability of your line managers and freeing up the space for them to be able to, making it easy for them to be able to do that. So even a simple thing like, if you send something to line managers in this railway, then put on it whether you need them to, what you need to do, you know, as a headline, do you want them to read it? Do you want them to brief it? Do you want them to action it? And then they've got some chance of actually looking at it and seeing the wood for the trees. So I was getting a bit passionate about that one because I spoke to these guys and I felt so sorry for them. They were mainly guys in this case, but and I spoke to the trade unions as well, and they were the same. They were like, you know, we just we just need the, the, the very concise information that can be targeted right at us, and then we can act upon it. But if you just scatter all this stuff at us, we've got no chance. Does that make sense? Does that help? I, I think it does. Actually, I wanted to dive. There was a question that came in. Um, sorry, and I should also thank you. Thank you to Karen Wallace who asked that question. Um, sorry for not mentioning it. But uh, there was another question um, from Janet, I believe, uh, who was actually curious on an inbox analysis. So can we touch on that just a little bit more in depth? So we, actually, you elaborated to say um, you had them and analyze their own um, uh, inbox themselves and report back. Um, is that the best way to do it? Or is there ways that I'm interested in, in ways because I've, I've never heard of this way of, of personifying what we have going on in our own organization. But I, I do agree the inbox is probably the, the thing that brings us to, uh, to a lot of the work we do. So learning as much as we can about how that inbox flows and works for our people is, is great knowledge. Um, just curious on uh, if, if, if that's the only way yeah, to do it. The way it worked this particular time was to say to these um, to, so it was about line managers. So it was taking a sample of line managers and saying, asking them. So what I said was, anything you get in your inbox, just forward it to me for a week if it's got anything to do with communication. So actually, quite a lot of what came through was not stuff generated by the communication team. And yeah. that in itself was a was a eye opener because they got you know they got stuff from HR, they got stuff from finance, they got stuff from IT saying just cascade this and can you just do that? And you know there was no sort of air traffic control over what was what was going to these people. Right. But asking them to send me what they considered to be comms was really useful because it was interesting to know what they considered to be comms. Right. If that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you're learning, you're learning what their perception of communication is, as well yeah. as finding all these loopholes within the organization that maybe. Yes, yeah. and also if we just looked, looked at the what we call a, the official comms that came out of the official comms team, then we'd have only been looking at a tiny slice of what they actually have to brief on to their teams. Amazing. So yeah. seeing it in the context of everything else made us realize that it was actually we were, we, you know, we were asking them to do a really impossible thing and we had to think think differently about how we got that stuff to them and how we managed the other stuff that was going to them as well brilliant brilliant all right i'm going to dive into the next question from mary baldwin 
Uh, interested to know your view on the importance of consistency in repeatable comms. Do people value regularity in knowing something is coming? I suppose I'm asking about the polarity of the monthly newsletter uh, compared to ad hoc, you know, Yammer updates, for example. Um, are firm foundations best um, supported with ad hoc, or do you have an opinion on um, on any of that? Yeah. Um, firm foundation supported with ad hoc is what I generally advocate because what you've got is, particularly now with hybrid working and, and you know, global audiences and all the rest of it, um, people people's world is very noisy. And if you want to um, engage with them, then it, it's helpful for them to know that the first Friday of every month is when the leader speaks to us and therefore this is a slot in my diary that I keep free. So that sort of practical reason for having those the regularity of, of channels. Um, but then you can't just be a slave to that. So if something obviously comes along that needs to happen, not on the third Friday of the month, then you need to have a have a way to get that out to them as well. So I think some some rhythm to the comm cycle is really, really useful. And also in terms of repetition, I think repetition of content is really useful as well. So quite mm. often line managers will push back and say, but we've already told them this. And my response is generally then tell them again and keep telling them. Um, yeah. Because the, um, you know, again, there's a lot of noise going on. And because you've told people something once doesn't mean they've, it's landed and they've acted upon it. Just need sure. to tell them once. So yeah, keep saying it over and over again. And the other thing about keep saying it over and over again is people begin to believe it. So if you have a leader brief, 12 briefs a year, every third Friday of the month, and every single time they tell you something different, there's no point in remembering the stuff they told you last time because you think, well, they'll have moved on to the next thing next time. Right. So repeating it, reinforcing it, evidencing it. So if you say innovation's important, then keep talking about innovation you know, find right. different ways to, to bring in innovation to, to the comms content. Don't say talk about innovation, innovation one month and then start taking, talking about I don't know, health and safety the next month or whatever. They're all important, but you get, you get my dream. Absolutely. Amazing. Um, so Janet Taylor has a question. What is your favorite way to listen to employees? So diving into the world of listening strategies, is there one one way you think is the most effective or efficient way to uh, to hear employees or, or tap into what they're feeling? Um, well, in an ideal world, face to face in a focus group is great if you can get people together around a table because then you get the benefit of some sort of team dynamic. You get the benefit of um, body language and all that sort of thing. Um, I do like talking to people on the phone, listening to people on the phone. Um, so again, you pick up on the passion of what they're saying and you know the, the sort of cadence of what they're saying and, it, it, and it's telltale things that you wouldn't necessarily get from the written word um but i think the most important thing about listening is that you do it um, right. whichever way works for you because um a lot of communication is one way and we're not doing enough definitely not doing enough listening ever um so there's a whole section in the book on listening but um I think the, the, the question is, the, the, the key is just do it. And then there's a really important um, three-parter, three, three parter, which is ask, analyze, act. So ask them a question, analyze what they've said, and then act upon it. And quite often in organizations, they if they, if they do it all, they just do the first bit. They do the analyze, the ask bit. And, oh, we've done the survey, great. They might do yeah. the analyze bit, but actually, the most, there's no point in doing A and A unless you do the third A, which is act upon it. Of course. Yeah. And, and it's actually something we, we talk about often is never ask a question you're not prepared to actually produce change from the answer. Um, you know, and it's exactly that. We, uh, we hear often the idea of uh, survey fatigue or um, feedback fatigue. And, and you know, I, I strongly believe if people are fatigued by giving feedback, uh, it's because we're not doing anything as a result, you know, and it's it's usually they're more tired that they keep giving feedback and nothing's happening out of that feedback uh, and they're actually tired of giving the feedback. So if it's useful, it probably won't uh, tire them out to do it often, um, which is yeah. which is something yeah. I firmly believe. Absolutely. Great. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Allison asked a question. So any recommendation or tips on communicating effectively with colleagues who are following the hybrid model? So we know a lot of organizations have changed into a hybrid model workplace where people can work from home or wherever they'd like um, for a certain amount of time during the week. Um, how should we be effectively communicating with colleagues who are, are, are not in the offices any longer? I think it's um, what differs from organization to organization. I think one of the things, one of the points I'd really make here is don't forget the people who are neither of those. So don't forget um, what, what we used to call blue collar workers. But, um, you know, in, in the last two years, the vast, vast majority of people have continued doing exactly the same job as they've always done in exactly the same way they've always done in exactly the same place they've always done. So there's a sort of disproportionate amount of noise going on about hybrid working um, when you think about healthcare, teachers, you know, any sort of um, factory worker, any sort of lorry driver, all of those people haven't changed. And if I was one of them, I'd be really annoyed about all the conversations going on about hybrid working. But if you have got a 100% white collar workforce and they are doing hybrid working, then I think it's just basically go through the ABCD model make sure that your channels are, and your content on your channels are equally effective, whether people are at home or at work. So yeah, go back to the, the model. Love that. Yeah, again, I think that's another thing we, we love to, to talk about at Interact is just the utilize the channels that are available to you. Yes, the internet is obviously our place to go, um, but there's more to it than, than that. You know, you want to tap into the world of digital signage, you want to tap into the world of, uh, of course, email um, is still a, is a great communication method um, if it's done correctly and points to the right, right behaviors looking to have. Um, it's, uh, that's great, that's fantastic. Um, I'm looking at time and going, there are a lot of questions still unanswered in here. Um, so. Anybody we didn't get to these questions, um, you can bet we will respond. Uh, we will get an answer from Leslie um, and, and get that to you uh, in a separate way. Um, and anybody who's on the, the webinar right now, you're a customer, we'll, we'll get all these answers out to the community, the Interact community as well. Um, but uh, Leslie, my last question to you is, and I'll, I'll get us to flip over to the next slide as well, because uh, as much as we want to know about how we get a hold of you um, in your social network of, of the world, um, what's the best way that uh, that we can get in touch with you if, if ever we wanted to talk more about this? Um, well, my um, website is www.almondcommunication.com. Perfect. Um, if you go to Amazon, you can get the book. Um, and that's got all my contact details on it. I'm on Twitter at, at all comms and email leslie at allmancommunication.com. Incredible. So we'll, we'll make sure that that contact information gets pushed out to everybody who's joined us here today. Um, a, a poll is going to shoot up on the screen um, and feel free to let us know if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Interact. Um, but we want to thank you, Leslie, for joining us today. It has been an absolutely mind-bending session. A lot of great things you shared with us to, to help us push us forward into a greater 2022 when it comes to our own career development in the internal comm space. So thank you very much for being here with us today. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And everyone, enjoy the rest of your day.